Okay, I will um, share my screen. Like I said, if you're new to this um, call, please just drop in the chat. Let me know. See my screen? Not yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now? Yes. Cool. Cool. Uh, okay, I'll get started. Um, <laughs> thanks everyone for coming to today's um, chat about all the nose integration with stacks. Uh, yeah, today is the 17th of February. Uh, thanks everybody for joining. And uh, this is kind of a hot topic right now. So I hope to catch the momentum with the rest of people and see what's possible in stacks that we can do to facilitate this. And today we have Jason, uh, an engineer from Citicoin. Uh, he's a lot more technical, so he's able to facilitate this chat uh, about all the nodes. And he's been working on stuff uh, in the Bitcoin NFT working groups. So lots of learnings. Uh, I hope the builders will come and tell us what sort of things you'd like to see. Uh, we can all collectively collect uh, different ideas and turn them into reality. So yeah. So yeah, so welcome to the call. So if this is your first time, uh, I go through a bit of stuff about the BIPs, sorry, about the SIPs. Um, SIP stands for Stacks Improvement Proposal. Um, and I'll give you an overall idea of what's going on, basically. But here's a good space for collaboration, for voicing your ideas, for voicing what you want to see in the Stacks. You want to talk about governance, uh, here we talk about voting criteria too. So a lot of different things about the Stacks network and the governance. Uh, and it's all about community participation and informing the community about what's going on and educate everyone. So yeah, so just a very quick overview. So SIP is, um, is basically just specification on governance stuff or technical stuff. And uh, it lives typically on GitHub. Um, but we bring those out into the public to uh, to discuss what are good and what are uh, what things we should do. Um, so yeah, Stack Super One is a big set basically. Uh, it's the fifteen. Uh, so yeah, that's just just an example. And then there are many more sets on GitHub you can go and check out. And I recommend actually reading Set Triple Zero because that's all about governance. You don't have to be technical to understand it. So yeah, please check out. Uh, so just to give everybody an overall update where we are in the SIP world, what's in the pipeline, what ideas on the table, uh, what things are nearly uh, being activated. So there are several stuff on the table. So probably the early idea, it's kind of becoming a draft already, is uh, Juliet's um, code of conduct, uh, Werner's stuff, those are closer and have actual an owner to sort of push it forward. So uh, yeah, I'm meeting Juliet uh, next week uh, to hopefully present next Friday. Um, but yeah, so there. Uh, last week we had a wallet client API chat, which might solve the need for a BTC transfer. So that one is actually pretty important. But yeah, I'll talk a little bit about that later. But those stuff are still sort of uh, before being voted on by the SIP editors committee which I'm spinning up basically. Uh, there, there's quite a few number of people, willing participants, but yeah. So a SIP will go through this pipeline and get to the end, like SIP um, 15 that get voted on and now it's ready to be activated. So yeah, so there are many things you can sort of participate in the conversation. Uh, they are on GitHub, they're on Stacks Forum. Uh, so yeah, or, or if you can't find them, just come find me and I'll help you find them. Okay, so uh, just a bit of quick update on Stack Super 1. Um, maybe Ju can give a little bit quick update. I, I don't know whether Raven testnet is still live, um, but I, I've been hearing there's a, a block being chosen for the activation. 
close to accept one. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right, great. <clears throat> uh, one sec, I'm using two uh, devices here. Just bear with me. I hear echo in my headphones. Okay, how about now? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, great, so the radon test net I think is still running, but that's gonna be immaterial pretty soon because I think today's the day we merge Stacks 2.1 to master. Um, I updated the SIP last night, SIP 15, with the activation block heights um, that would put the system at running live at the start of reward cycle 55, which is two reward cycles from now. This is consistent with what the um, integration partners have asked of us uh, for time to upgrade so that exchanges and such can get their nodes spun up because they will need to boot from Genesis this time. In the meantime, the radon test nut is a fork of the stack's main net. Um, it forked off at uh, reward cycle 52. And in this fork, it's, you know, it's different. It's done, the stacks here can't be traded, they're worthless, um, but it does run on Bitcoin mainnet and it uses the, the same uh, settings on, on mainnet. Um, the reason for the, the radon test net is that it gives people the ability to <clears throat> test out the new features as if it were a live system, but before, you know, uh, pulling the trigger and doing that for the whole network. Um, before, before the uh, start of reward cycle 55, the mainline test net will also go live uh, with POX2 in about, uh, in two test net reward cycles, which is um, not four weeks, but two weeks. So that's... Uh, approximately uh, 2,422,000 2, something. Um, it's in the code. I don't have the number in front of me right now. Um, but it's in it's in about two weeks uh, is when the mainline test net will switch over to 2.1. And um, that we can declare. And if that works smoothly and we don't anticipate any problems because we've tested this already, um, then we are expecting a pretty anticlimactic you know, transition to 2.1 um, sometime around mid-March or so. Possibly a little later. I don't know exactly what block height it's going to be because you know Bitcoin cool. blocks are probabilistic. Is this is that the block height uh, seven hundred eighty one thousand five five one? Yeah. Yep. So I gave a quick calculation. We got like four thousand five hundred, about uh, thirty block <laughs> Bitcoin blocks to go, which is about thirty one days. So expect stacks to from one to go live. Mid to late, mid to late March. Sounds about right. Yep. Great. And Pox two will go live. The same stacking time. thing, right? the the new stacking feature, basically, right? <clears throat> Pox two. Yep. All oh. the new stacking features turn on um, right after the two point one activation. All of your stacks that are locked will unlock, so you have a chance to restack them. Um, you'll still get POX rewards as if they are locked, though, but that's just for this current reward cycle to give everyone a chance to switch over to POX2. You'll be unable to stack into POX1. POX1 is considered defunct now. Like, if you try to do so, you just get an error. Cool, cool. Oh, great to hear. We are actually getting there and have a date. Uh, thank you so much, Code Devs. You've been amazing. Uh, yeah, so just a quick update on this. I think it's pretty important because this web client API touches Bitcoin balances uh, as far as I know. And I think last week, um, Janek gave an uh, explanation. I think it has also some ordinals stuff in there, if I'm not wrong. So this API could act as a quite a powerful tool in the back end. Uh, yeah, I don't know if anybody got anything else just to add, but yeah, that's that was my takeaway. <clears throat> so yeah, so the discussion we're trying to get the builders and the creators of these uh, uh, the, the API, the SIP, um, come together, see what's actually needed in the greater stacks ecosystem. So. I would say any wallet providers or any builders uh, who will be using any Bitcoin related tools in the apps, uh, please go and um, go and chime in in this developers channel in Stacks Discord. I think that's perhaps how Janet prefers to get the discussion going. Uh, 
uh, and see what uh, what could be good to include or not include or different things like that. But yeah, Janek uh, is the, the lead on that. So please chime in in that channel in Stack Discord. Um, yeah, so that will solve this BTC transfer request. We don't even need it potentially, uh, but that's TBC. Uh, and a bit of uh, stuff from Werner, we're going to try and push that into a draw. And Juliet's stuff too, going to try and push that into a draw this quarter. So yeah, so that's the uh, sort of the, the top level, what's going on in this world. So if you've got any comments, uh, now is your chance. It's an open floor now. Before we go into the main topic of ordinals with uh, Jason, uh, just unmute or raise your hand and we can unmute you or drop your question in the chat. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, let's move on to uh, the main topic, ordinals. Uh, I'll let you take over, Jason. All right, thanks so much. And thanks everybody for giving me some time to talk today. Um, thought I'd cover a few different topics and just kind of start out with what excites me about ordinals. Um, so you can see here we've got, let me get these off the screen here. There we go. So you can see this is uh, one of the first Bitcoin faces that was uh, minted as an ordinal. And there's been a lot of different projects um, jumping on this and checking this out and trying it out. But we're also learning a lot about what ordinal theory really means and like what it can unlock for what we can do here in the future uh, with Bitcoin transactions. So me personally, like I love this idea of testing out something new, doing something that hasn't been done before. And I think we're really just only scratching the surface because Stacks has such a strong connection to Bitcoin um, that this is going to open up a ton of new opportunities, and especially with Stacks 2.1 around the corner. Um, so I did, I did want to give a shout out to the core engineers as well, seeing all the hard work go into that, being at this nice uh, little transition point where things are coming together. I'm so excited to see that come into a close. I know it's been a whole ton of effort, so I wanted to take a minute to say that. All right, so I'm coming out here before I before I jump into it. Um, I, I love this post from Alex. I saw this on Twitter here. You know, it's um, Bitcoin's worth more than monetary value. It's block space is also selling for a premium. You know, we have something new going on here, and we're seeing the fee market change a little bit on Bitcoin. We're seeing a little more of a fight for block space. And overall, I think this is going to end up being a really positive thing for the ecosystem. It's just something we're we're still getting used to. So before I, I jump into all the different projects and fun stuff that are happening, I did want to give a quick plug to the Bitcoin NFTs working group. Um, so this was assembled originally around the idea of having ownership of an NFT on Stacks directly through a Bitcoin address. And we had actually been exploring a lot of ways to store data within a Bitcoin transaction or have more interaction between the Bitcoin and Stacks chain. So when all of this discussion around ordinals and everything started blowing up, um, we've actually taken a lot of the learnings there. And we're also just trying to synthesize a lot of what's going on in the ecosystem so we can help each other move fast and start releasing things that are really powerful to enable not only more on the BTC side, but more in the connection between BTC and Stacks and some of the related standards. Um, so we do, we have a repository with some issues just around what we're thinking about in ordinals. And the one here that says bring in ambassadors. Um, you know, if anybody is working on a um, uh, ordinal project, a BNS project, or if you're just uh, developing tooling around anything like that, we'd love for you to have someone on the regular calls that we have. We have calls on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And you can find more information here in the Bitcoin NFTs working group, um, as well as in the, we're one of the um, working groups that's defined in the Stacks Network repo as well. But if you have trouble finding all that or if GitHub is in your forte, um, do feel free to reach out to me. I'm on Discord as well, buddy, and uh, have a few other avenues too. So if anybody needs to reach out, if, uh, definitely please do. And I can already think of uh, two people that can potentially go into that group because one guy, uh, Akbar, he launched an NFT project. So the only sort of two projects on Stacks launch, uh, sorry, launch ordinal projects is Akbar and Megaphone. And Akvac loaned some badgers, Bitcoin badgers or something like that. Um, so he's actually the lead on that project. So maybe he might be good to have in the room. And also there's quite a 
few leaders in the big um, BNS style, basically. Uh, they, have, they have a like a council almost. Um, so maybe somebody from the council could be in your group if you if you think that might be useful. Yeah, I think that would be great. You know, I saw I've been watching just what projects have been doing, uh, basically just through Twitter and some of the other feeds that, that, that we've had around and um, would love to hear both like what the experience is like, especially with the different ways that we've done inscribing or, you know, where the wallets have storage now and we'll jump into a, a bunch of these different pieces um, in, a, in a little bit, but definitely anybody who wants to participate, we're looking for people who are thinking about how we can take this to the next level. And we definitely just want to see how everybody can work together as well. Cool. So before I jump into the rest of this, um, you know, I did want to take a quick pivot on Stacks 2.1. And I found this blog post here um, that had some great information on what's going on and some of the improvements. But really, the part that I'm uh, most gravitated to is some of the new abilities that we'll have when we're working with data uh, on the Clarity side. Um, so, you know, this brings native SegWit and Taproot support both to POX and to the mining operations. You have a new ability to decode Bitcoin transactions and convert raw data to and from Stacks addresses. You can decode binary data into a Clarity data structure. You can verify SP SPV proofs for Bitcoin transactions. And you can convert Bitcoin public keys and signatures to Stacks addresses. Um, really, what everything I just said there are some of the new abilities that are coming in Stacks 2.1 that's going to make the connection between Bitcoin and Stacks that much more powerful. Um, we'll have some new abilities that weren't there before, and we'll have some improvements, uh, just as you see in the blog post here from Mitchell. And it's it's going to be super fun to see. So part of what we're starting to plan out is a mix of what can we do today, what's possible especially as we're learning more about ordinal theory and, and what that means, um, as well as like, what could we do with these new abilities and what more can we unlock in that connection? Cool. And with that, I wanted to just give a shout out to some of the, the tools that have been built out there. So, you know, we've, we've seen since the inscription started, we had ordinal spot become an early player coming from the Satoshi Pools team and Brian over there. Um, you're able to upload files and inscribe them, very simplified process. And we have the same thing here on Gamma, uh, which has been huge. So I think between these two, we can count them in for a large part of the traffic of inscriptions because it's been such a simple process. And I even tried it out myself. I put one of my Explorer Guild up there just to see what the experience was like. And I was surprised at how easy it was. Um, so a huge shout out to both teams for making inscriptions accessible to everyone. And I also like this idea, there's um, Ordinal's collections that are starting to form. So I think you just have to um, relay some information over to Gamma. I couldn't find the original post on how to get on this list, um, but this is one of those open questions that I think people are starting to figure out as well as like, how do you identify that these are all associated with each other? And I've seen a few ideas out there, but um, you know, originally it's just, what, it, what are the numbers? You could have a separate list or, or something else, but I, I eventually see We'll probably have some kind of data stored that um, refers to something as a collection at some point here soon. Some other people who are doing some amazing things in support. We have the Xverse Wallet just drop their ordinal support, so you can then send them over to Xverse Wallet. And in addition to that, we have uh, the Hero Wallet has begun rolling out their Bitcoin support as well. So we're going to see the ability to use native Bitcoin in both wallets, as well as do some fun things, starting with inscriptions and ordinals. We have this really cool tool called OrdiSwap coming from Mechanism HQ and Hank. Um, so this allows for a trustless swap on the stack side. Um, so you basically escrow the stacks uh, that you would use to sell. I'm sorry, you escrow the stacks for the sell price. You prove that the transfer happened and it releases it to the buyer. I, I believe I might be a little off on that, but still it, it gives us a way to perform a trustless swap. And it shows off one of those features where we can prove a Bitcoin transaction happened due to that connection between stacks and Bitcoin. So there's, it's definitely a really powerful thing. And it kind of led to thinking of the inverse. Um, so we've seen the NeoSwap team has done some smart auctions already and it's starting to work with NFT artists on selling ordinals. And at the moment, I believe the smart auction is settled. 
um, normally, and then they would use RD swap to execute the transfers after the fact. Um, but it did bring up that thought of like, how do we get from here to actual trustless atomic swaps and um, be able to interact with them between chains? And I think there's been some ideas in the ordinals world, like around Teleburn and what that could mean. There's also been some thoughts about wrapping and what, how does any of this affect the IP? So a lot of open questions and a lot of learnings, but definitely a direction that we want to go. And finally, another one I heard from was DLC link. Um, so, you know, you have this idea of a discrete log contract where you can set parameters um, so that if an action happens on stacks, it can be proved by an Oracle, something can happen on the Bitcoin main chain. Um, so it's another one of those really interesting fits for ordinals. And they were just speaking, I believe it was yesterday, about having something up on testnet and trying some ideas out around storing an ordinal, um, that specific Satoshi, that specific UTXO in the correct format, so you could lock it up in a DLC and then be able to claim it back. Um, so that, that was a lot of the projects I found. And then DNS too, which I, I do not have an account logged in that has a name, but we have this uh, wonderful tool. This actually also came from Hank over there at Mechanism, where you can inscribe your BNS zone file um, to, to the Bitcoin chain. And the idea here is to use some of the standards that were originally developed uh, by New Internet Labs and Larry Saluga to sort of have a DNS-like structure where you could say this BNS name would redirect to this website. It also is associated with this Bitcoin address, um, maybe this Noster public key. It gives us like a data structure that we can use alongside the zone files. And then you could verify that this is your name and you can inscribe that to Bitcoin. Um, I could see some additional tooling being built on top of that to really just strengthen the use of like BNS and to, to see some new stuff there. So, you know, shout out to those same groups. You've got New Internet Labs, uh, Mechanism HQ, you've got the BNS DAO. I think this is a really cool opportunity to um, really align an effort around what this next version of BNS would look like, especially with some new opportunities that are opened up by having ordinals on the table. Mm -hmm. All right, and then the last little bit I had is just a shout out to some of the different NFT projects that I've seen that are making their way over to Ordinals. I didn't have a whole bunch of links, um, but I did just want to at least mention the projects and everybody else. So I have seen posts from This Is Number One, Stacks Parrots, you have Alex Redloff with the Blocks Collection, Satoshables, Megapunks from Megapunk, which Hero mentioned earlier, Nonish Kingdom, City Packs, The Guests, you have Bitcoin Pizzas, we have the Bitcoin Faces that you've seen earlier. So already we're seeing that uh, our ecosystem is uh, way geared to start playing around and having fun with Bitcoin. I, I think we've all had it in, in the back of our minds and, and maybe felt a little limited in what was possible. Um, but I think this really opens that up to say like, oh, it doesn't just depend on having wallet support for a feature. Um, you know, when you're really wanting to build something new, you can create it and, and develop what would become a new standard. All right, um, last little bit was just kind of thinking about what's coming next. Um, you know, I see this idea of minimizing trust in swaps. Um, you know, how do we get to that trustless situation where we have something like SBTC? Um, where, you know, is there a way that we could send and just have it represented on the stack side or maybe lock it and have it represented on the stack side? So some ideas around that. Um, thinking about how we can really leverage our connection because we can read Bitcoin transactions and we can react to them. You also have uh, the chain hooks from Hero that give you the ability to run a server that can actually respond to transactions as well. So a few different models that will work if you needed to work between chains as far as the data goes. And also just thinking about what data is stored. Um, one of the thoughts that kind of keeps coming back to me is that, you know, these ordinals are really just defined by HTML MIME types, which tell you what kind of content is displayed. And you could say, oh, this is gonna be an HTML web page, or it's gonna be a PNG image. Um, there's a lot more that can be built on top of that. It's, it's that whole um, dumb server, smart client kind of idea. So I, I think there's some fun that could be had there, although, we will see what the trend starts to be with the fee market and everything else. And yeah, so that's that's about it for me that I had to present, but would love it uh, if anybody has any questions or anything to add. Albert, you can go ahead. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I don't think he can unmute. Maybe we need to give him a co-host. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you, Hero Gamer. Hey, thanks, Jason. That was um, a really great overview on all the cool stuff that's happening uh, in relation to ordinals. Um, just a, a quick update. I mean, probably some of you already know, but DLC Link, um, great great team, but they, they've shifted their focus to EVM. Um, whereas Deep Lake, um, they ha they they have a DLC. Well, it, actually, they they came up with the API even faster than than, than uh, DLC Link. But the point is that they're focused completely on stacks. Um, they're also working with um, Liquidium to um, create um, loans um, through through ordinals, right? And so um, maybe I can put you guys in touch and then we can um, update that for next time. Yeah, that'd be great. I think anybody um, you know working in the space, if there's a way we can collaborate within either that GitHub working group or just keeping things together in Discord, I, I think the real benefit here is um, you know many hands make light work. And if we really wanna move fast and like jump in front and show that we can make these standards, I think having that cross pollination in the community is gonna be the most important. So definitely, definitely would love to reach out. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll reach out to you. Hi, Jason. Thank you so much for uh, that overview. It's, uh, it's been a, an extremely exciting past few weeks uh, following this. Uh, and uh, uh, so, like you described, uh, ordinals really uh, made Bitcoin, you know, non fungible, uh, right? Uh, again, um, and so I'd like to know kind of your thoughts as to, um, you know, could there be could could the war for you know, block space uh, get even more competitive to the point that no longer there's competition for uh, the space, the space uh, within you know the set the, the Satoshi space, right? But also uh, competition for where a transaction gets mined in a block, and ultimately this could then lead to uh, MEV wars, and then could that open up you know opportunities to build infrastructure to you know handle that? I know other chains have much more. Uh, you know, uh, built, uh, but uh, I just like to hear your thoughts about that. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think this is kind of the natural direction that that we expect Bitcoin to go, right? Like when we think of the halvings happening every year and the transaction fees supposed to be the subsidy for the miners, the natural progression that the layer one is going to get expensive in gas at some point is going to happen. We just don't know when and we didn't know what would push it. And this was in a way a surprise because we had a little extra block space, we had a little extra time. Um, but I, I think as that's happening, um, you know, we have this unique opportunity to, to leverage that connection that I keep coming back to and just show that when, when it does happen, there's ways we can move and we can do something over on stacks. And guess what? Every stacks block settles to a Bitcoin block. And with the Nakamoto release, you'll have 100% BTC finality. So when you're starting to look at like what the alternative could be to that, I, I, I feel like that's a really cool position that the ecosystem is poised for. And I think right now building on anything to help with ordinals, inscriptions, um, things like the simple inscribe tools, being able to send and receive, um, and then maybe even doing a lot more, I think we'll learn a lot and then we'll be able to learn what else we can do on top of that. Um, you know, like a random idea I had was maybe we set up a contract that emulates ordinals on stacks. <laughs> you could come do them a lot cheaper. You could store some data. You can retrieve some data. But at this time, I think it's more fun to focus on what's happening with them. And again, like what else we can do with them? Um, you know, another thought around storing data was there was a, a proposal for Stacks 2.1 originally for a generic data import. And the idea there was to, if you spent sent a specially crafted Bitcoin transaction and op return with a special magic code, the miners would automatically drop the data into a Clarity contract. And this got me thinking, um, you know, the, the way Ordinals is doing this is to create a valid transaction and to use the op push to identify and everything else. But we had a proposal from Hank a little ways back about using op drop to kind of stash data inside their inside the Bitcoin script that we could read from Clarity, but wouldn't necessarily affect the stack or the processing. Um, so I'm starting to really rethink, like could those two be linked up together to where you could have a certain preamble or a certain block of uh, script that you could identify that would still be a part of a valid transaction and miners could still populate that data on the stack side because then you'd have, you'd essentially have an index on both sides. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we can do that in the next hard fork, which we ended up time for 2.1 and 2.1, as everyone knows, is already pretty delayed. Well, I think this is interesting too, because before that, thinking of using like Opperturn or or maybe being able to use something similar to how they're storing things in the in the witness data, um, it might give us a new avenue to to achieve that as well, and it might be cheaper. I was thinking like cheaper and easier support, but I'm also just a fan of like between the experts and the hero wallet, we have this unique ability where people can already log in, do their authentication. We have the wallet SIP that um, hero mentioned where it's like, what can the client know about the wallet and the addresses and everything else? And I, I think as we start unlocking a little more of that, we're gonna see some, some new things open up too. Um, if we proceed with doing the um, import feature, I would recommend not copying data anymore just because it's already on Bitcoin as in the form of an ordinal. Um, just storing an index to it or like a hash or a digest would probably be sufficient. Uh, reason being here is that um, something that I don't think a lot of, has occurred to a lot of folks yet, um, witness state in Bitcoin is soft state. If it disappeared, for, if all the wit copies of witness data for a Bitcoin block disappeared, tomorrow, it would actually not cause the Bitcoin blockchain to stop. That data can go away. Um, I don't expect that would happen on purpose, like um, witness data is required to validate SegWit transa transactions, but a SegWit transaction without the witness data can still be validated. In fact, SegWit is specifically designed to allow pre-SegWit nodes to keep synced with the network um, by specifically uh, segregating, keeping separate the witness data uh, from the Bitcoin transaction, but it's still a well-formed Bitcoin transaction. Um, th what that means for, for us in terms of uh, robustness engineering is we can't count on that data always being available. We should design for the possibility that data, witness data could be deliberately pruned from the blockchain later on for um, the whole host of reasons, like ranging from accident to deliberate, um, deliberate bad behavior to, you know, legal requirements on behalf of exchanges to keep operating in certain jurisdictions. I can think of a bunch of reasons why. That's great. That's something I'm adding to my notes. <laughs> yeah, I saw a question in the chat about um, what's been the thinking around how Stacks NFT will integrate with older NFT. I guess you touched on that. But are there, are there any early standards being considered? Um, not yet. I think people are still playing with it. Um, certainly would love to see some standards arise if there's several different teams trying to converge on, on a, the one true way to deal with ordinals here. Yeah, I was going to say the same. Like out of all the projects I've listed, I know that they're doing things, but I haven't seen what the things are. And I think it, the more we can find people in alignment of like, are we trying to um, burn one, mint the other, or like what are the actual actions being taken? And if you Ooh, find... I see. It, project are doing the same thing that's where we want to build that collaboration and then you can move twice as fast as well plus once you're getting ready to do like an rfc or if you want to move something over to a sip standard if we were going to take it that far having um a skeleton implementation or an idea is like a good way to start that process so you can start writing it up and everything else too hey how's it going thanks for letting me unmute that was actually my question um I just sort of think about this yesterday just a tiny bit. And I was wondering like if it would be possible to do something like like I the way I think about this is that the ordinal is like the true, is like the source of truth for an NFT, like in a potential like model of thinking about this anyway. And then the stack side could could enable like editing met metadata for that ordinal, but we should always respect like the property rights of the ordinal itself. And so I was wondering if it would be possible to change or to like have a new stacks NFT standard that replaced the transfer function with a claim function. And then the claim function could look at the, the Bitcoin chain, look up the like the corresponding like Bitcoin address for a, a particular stacks address, and then check to see if like that address owned the ordinal that corresponded to the to the NFT. Yeah, I mean that could be done. Like stacks could very well become the um, the missing piece of ordinals on Bitcoin, where it keeps track of who owns what and how, you know, auctions and transfers happen. 
Yeah, and I, I think that's a lot of what we wanted to work toward too when we were looking at the original ideas around the Bitcoin NFTs working group. It was like, how can you send a pure Bitcoin transaction and become the owner of a Stacks NFT? And once you unlock that part of the puzzle, then you start to look at, okay, what does it take to do a transfer? What does it take to do other things um, past there? But there are definitely some uh, learnings that we have that we have in that repo in the Bitcoin NFTs um, GitHub. I can drop a link to that one. And yeah, I saw you were, you need to be unmuted again. I'll wait yeah, for you to I, I come back. Thanks. I see that all the time. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stay unmuted this time. Um, yeah, I was looking actually just some of the, like the, the Bitcoin libraries. I know that uh, Frieger put in the chat too. He has a new one for 2.1. So I'll definitely like explore that. I'd like to put together kind of maybe a proof of concept for for like this kind of idea of like replacing the transfer function with a claim function to see if it's feasible. I think it could be really neat, especially since ordinals are like completely immutable, but a lot of NFTs, like you want to be able to mutate that metadata. So I think that could be like a really nice like use case for for stacks interacting with ordinals in that way. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, I'd love to know like, if you want to detail a little bit out of what you're thinking so others can kind of think along the same lines. Yeah. Just, like, I think that uh, the GitHub there would be the best spot. Yep. And if you see the Bitcoin colors repository, that was the original idea we were kind of mocking things around, but some of the issues in there cover everything from um, like different mobile wallet experiences to like standard transaction flows to some thoughts that we've had um, around ownership and some other items. And then the Clarity Bitcoin library that you mentioned there as well is um, really cool. So there was a contract, I, I think it originated with you, Jude, right? The, the, the original Clarity parsing library. Oh yeah, that thing, nice. that took a life on its own. I think it got part <laughs> of uh, Magic Stacks now. Um, they made some necessary yeah. improvements. I and I know that yesterday. Had, yeah, Half of that code is just like a slice, the slice right. primitive, which is now native in Clarity too. So, okay. uh, and a freaker right now is taking the lead on on porting it over to Clarity too, and um, it'll be a lot cool. cheaper to run. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's the background of what you're seeing there. And you will see a few projects like uh, Frieger has his swaps, um, catamaran swaps, and then you have the magic protocol, which had the slight, slight improvements. And um, we'll see a new implementation of that that will use Stacks 2.1 features. And as Drew was saying, it should be, become a lot, a lot nicer. <laughs> nice. A lot shorter. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a good time to be uh, jumping in then. Yeah, yeah. In any way, um, you know, like just outlining the theory about how we're going to use it, what we're going to do with it. In addition to the Clarity Library, there was also an effort by, um, let's say it was Jay Ruffer and the Web3 devs, but they made a NPM library that you can use as well. Okay. We both are uh, update targeted a grant, but I'd have to double check. <laughs> it, it almost feels like there are lots of Ordinals projects, whether they come from, you know, the Bitcoin Maxi Cloud or non-Bitcoin Maxi Cloud, they do not have the ability to do more interesting stuff. And what you and Brad were saying was that maybe this sort of sort of true. It, it correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just trying to digest what you what you guys just said. Is there a certain amount of sort of sort of true, but it's sort of Bitcoin and any any sort of other evolving data, like on the metadata side that changes can be stored on stacks and it can, it can evolve on the stacks chain. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the, something like that? The Megapont robots <laughs> are kind of like my, my uh, like use case Example. here. It's like, like Megapont yeah, yeah, robots yeah. could never be on ordinals because the it's fundamental to, to that project is, is updating yeah. the metadata when you're when you're burning the components. Um, yeah. So almost like if Megapod was to do the robot factory again, they could potentially have inscribed their uh, the base uh, component there and then use stacks to evolve that component. Uh, is that something like that? Yeah, I mean, how you think about it, it's like, it's, it's kind of hard to get the, the full implementation, but I, I kind of was thinking like the, the components would live on the stack side and then the, then the each robot would be assigned an ordinal and then the and then the actual factory could be like a, a JavaScript like a reader even. Yeah. And then you just, you put the put the metadata into the into the JavaScript reader and it would it would be able to display the, the robot inside an ordinal potentially. 
Um, but yeah, I think my overall like concern maybe about Stacks NFTs if they don't evolve is that people outside the Stacks ecosystem will see uh, like ordinals and they'll see Stacks NFTs and be like, well, these aren't real st- like Bitcoin NFTs now. Like we, we're, we're sort of holding out Stacks NFTs as like, oh, these are NFTs on Bitcoin. But now it seems like ordinals are, are you know taken off in such a way that that like integrating very tightly with them seems important. Yeah, that's that's a sentiment uh, very much shared by all of the uh, Stacks ecosystem entities. I'm right sure. Now. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna right, go back I'm, to mute, but I really appreciate the appreciate the time. I'll I'll, uh, I'll post in the GitHub's with uh, jumping in. Follow up. Yeah. Uh, Frigger had a question about Clarity Bitcoin Library updates for two point one. I think he wants some feedback. Is that related to Ordinal? Oh, Frigger, do you want to just unmute him? Oh, didn't realize he was here. Let me unmute him. Yes, here he is. Frigga? Um, is the question in the chat? Maybe we can just do it if he's if he's occupied. Uh, he said, I'm looking for clarity Bitcoin library update for Tupam One. Um, he's Oh, he's working on it. He's got a grant for it. Um, maybe he's looking for Viva. Um, or maybe it's maybe he's on mobile or something and just it was auto corrected badly. Yeah, that'd be my guess. And at the last link that I dropped into to the uh, Stacks Grant Launchpad is is the grant page for it. Um, and looking at it, it's just uh, still in progress. Like I don't see any updates that, that are asking for anything at, at this time. So I, I think that's more what it was, but yeah, he's definitely been the lead on that one. And um, we'll see, I, I want to say, I'm looking at the deliverables now, um, definitely the clarity contract and then maybe the library as well. Right, so I'm seeing more questions. Will there be additional clarity? Will there be additional clarity library regarding SVPC release? That part I am not sure about because I'm not sure what will be required um, for interacting with SPTC just yet. I haven't dove into that part of it. Um, I do imagine that we'll need a library of some sort, but there is nothing that I know of at this time. Um, but it sounds like a great thing for somebody to apply for a grant to build toward. And I don't know if it should be tied in together or if it should be something separate because it, it is in some ways a little different, but I, I could see an argument either way. Cool. Yeah, yeah, anyone can right make now. an update to the library, so. Cool. Uh, right now, if you have any comments or use cases, uh, please feel free to um, uh, raise your hand and we'll give you a call with co-hosting. Um, but yeah, another question. Uh, people use NFC to mint on ETH. It's way too expensive at this point. Uh, minting moving to layer two, polygon as such, I see similar tra- trajectory for this ordinal thing. What do you think? It's already happening. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I'm seeing that in the community, like lots of people buying new stacks and FTDs. Um, yeah, I think people are coming in actually. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah right now. This morning. Thanks, you're a gamer. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, really impressed with everyone who's here and all the work you guys are doing. Um, so I'm the founder of Trajan. Uh, we're working on a reputation platform where we use non-transferable NFTs as endorsements of skills or characters. And then obviously linking that to a BNS. Um, we're planning on launch. We have we can launch our alpha at the end of March, but now this whole ordinal thing is really thrown us for a loop, <laughs> and trying to figure out how and if uh, it could uh, you know work for us. Um, you know, Casey's work. I've been we've been following each other for years, and he messaged me back in December telling me I should use ordinals for Trajan, and you know back in December that's like what five years ago in terms of ordinal 
timelines, right? Like that December was forever ago in terms of ordinal. But anyways, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm now, you know, looking at that. Um, can't say too much, but other than wanted to hear from you guys, any thoughts or uh, for like, where does, gosh, I have so many questions. So I'll have to keep it brief. Maybe we'll just ask one. In terms of non transferability, I have two questions. One is for making ordinals non transferable, what would it take to do that in a practical way? Is that something a user can do, or do we need to update some things? My second question is do you guys see any way to connect ordinals to a BNS? Because so much depends for us on Trajan for having an identity that, that doesn't change and all these um, NFTs and or ordinals go to the same um, identity. Does that make sense? To answer your first question, um, a straightforward thing to do to make an ordinal non-transferable is to send it to an unspendable address. Um, it doesn't have to be like um, a burn address per se. It could be an op return that encodes the, uh, whose payload encodes the true owner. Um, you could also do something like hash a known um, unspendable value, like you know the string of all zeros with your address to form a new address. So it's a unique address, but it's also not spendable because there's no feasible way to calculate the private key for that for that address, given that it's calculated. Uh, the address is calculated without using keys in this case. Uh, in, in the second case, um, right now, uh, I know that Hank has a tool out that lets you um, link your zone file to your BNS name by placing it in the Bitcoin blockchain as an ordinal. Um, I'm not sure if that does, yeah, bns.xyz in the in the link right there. Um, that's the direction they're they're trying to head towards um, to make it so that your name state lives in an ordinal. Is there specific features you're looking for from BNS? Because I know that um, Hank and Jeff are working on BNS X right now, uh, which is like the next gen version. It's not, I think, I think they have like the first iteration of that live, um, but they're definitely uh, reconsidering things, I'm sure, now that this is like, you know, just before ordinals really took off. So they're probably, you know, open to taking features, feature requests and, and pull requests to make that happen. And if, if there's something more that you wanted to do. Yeah, thanks, Jude. Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with their work and what they're doing. Talk to them a little bit. Um, again, I'm not a, I'm not a software engineer, so I'm the low IQ here on the team, but, um, I that. think, <laughs> I think, uh, what it comes down to probably practically is the user interface to do so. So like right now it's straightforward on stacks, right? So if you want to endorse someone, you just send an NFT to that person's BNS address and it'll say, oh, you know, John Smith is developer. Okay. That's, that's easy to do on stacks. Uh, easy for the user to do is just, you know, we can do that programmatically, but from a user perspective, I guess maybe that's more my question is what would that experience be like if someone says, okay, I want to, I want to endorse, you know, Jude for stacks and obviously it needs to be non-referable and it needs to be sent to Jude's identity or at least to his collection of these endorsement ordinal NFTs. Yeah, so uh, right now you can put your Bitcoin address uh, for your BNS name um, into your into your BNS zone file, uh, regardless of where they get stored. What that means is there's now a way to I look up uh, Jude.btc and get my Bitcoin address. Uh, from there, um, you could uh, send the ordinal NFT to me by simply sending the NF that that ordinal Satoshi um, to a non-spendable output. So off return, blah, blah, blah. But the blah, blah, blah here is just my Bitcoin address. So then programmatically, you can look at the, that ordinal's uh, final transaction and say, oh yes, it's unspendable, but it was also sent to the same address that uh, Jude.bgc had claimed at that time. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for to where you can send it to, to someone that's their known address, their known identity, but not to spend it or to send it to someone else. Otherwise, so. Okay, yeah, that kind of confirms, I guess, it's technically feasible, I guess, today. There's no need to do anything. When I asked Casey this question, boy, his his answer was uh, creative, to say the least. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if it was just because he wanted to do it all within some new ordinal you know, process or feature or something, but what you're describing, Jude, is more straightforward and understandable. So, um, okay, well, I'll chew on that. And that was both mostly my, my main questions, I guess. Yeah, and I, I dropped a link in the chat for you too. Um, in our Bitcoin NFT working group, we have kind of an open topic around what's going on with uh, the BNS XYZ tool and like BNS zone files. 
Um, so that's another spot too, that you could voice some of what your needs are. And then we can make sure that as we're working towards these standards, it covers everything. But I, I think the same thing, um, you know, there's definitely some cool things we can do. And one of the things that came up in the chat too, is if you set the output value of an ordinal to be less than the dust limit, it becomes non-transferable possibly. So it might be something else we can explore, but this, this is where like knowing the problem we're trying to solve um, is the best place to start because there's a lot of cool little things we can do both with scripts on the Bitcoin side and with clarity on the stack side. Okay, I'll add to that uh, the link that you sent me on GitHub for that. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, to be clear, Jason, there's actually no consensus rule on the size of the uh, outputs. That's a policy rule. Like the Bitcoin network won't let you send a transaction, but a miner can do this on their own. Ah, okay, so that wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it sounds as if right now, Jason, what uh, what perhaps could help the conversation to be more uh, evolved forward would be maybe get some founders use cases uh, and sort of shoot them your way. Um, you know, maybe Megapon that I'm maintaining ordinals NFT right now, very soon. If they are going to do some interesting stuff with those ordinals, they might be thinking about some use cases that may or may not be doable right now, but maybe through you, uh, you guys can perhaps come up with a way of doing that and therefore understand what needs to be built around this. Is that right? Yeah, and I think just working out in the open too. I mean, you know, learning what we're all doing with the connections and with like what, what's on one side, what's on the other side, how are we defining interactions? Um, since all of this is brand new, the more we can work together around those ideas, I, I think it's super helpful. Um, like, you know, two things that have definitely been coming to mind for me is you have the, I believe it's BIP322 that handles message signing. And um, you have an interesting method there where you can do proof of a UTXO. So if the wallet would allow for signing an ordinal, there might be something you can do with the off-chain data there in the Stacks Clarity contract. And also just thinking about like, what, what data do we want to store on chain? Um, you know, it, it comes back to the like general use of blockchain anyway, but though I had a, a NFT project ask me the other day, like, you know, should I launch my NFT on Stacks or, or Bitcoin? And I was like, well, what are you talking about? If you're talking about a collection of a bunch of images, um, you know, you could really kind of work with either, but what, what do you want to be your source of truth? Sort of what Ragnar was um, talking about too. And I think there's a lot of potential in that. Like the BNS zone file idea, for example, is saying, what if I wrote a record that looks a lot like a DNS record that you know, powers a lot of uh, how we resolve websites today? And what if I wrote that to Bitcoin to prove, you know, there's this connection between the two and then I can still use things on the stack side. And, um, you know, do we need to store images on the Bitcoin blockchain? I mean, it's fun. I think it's super cool. It's happening. And I love the way people are getting inventive, but I've also seen a dynamic uh, SVG generator where you, you can specify the ID on this little web page and it will generate you different SVGs similar to things that, that we explored before. And, um, you know, with all the different mime types and things that you can embed, it, you just start to ask yourself the question, especially if we see a spike in gas fees and if that trend continues, what needs to live where and, and what makes that important? So just, you know, that having a hash or something very simple stored on the Bitcoin side might be the direction things go in the future, which to me only strengthens the argument for stacks anyway, since we hash the stacks block to Bitcoin anyway. Cool. So, um, is it best like to get this? Because I know you have a Bitcoin NFT working group going on. Is it best for for me to send people that way, and you guys can continue this conversation of the stacks to Bitcoin or to all the nodes integration there? Yeah, I'd say any builders who are working on ordinals or thinking about what they can do between Stacks and Bitcoin, definitely check it out and share just some of what you're thinking. Um, I think at a high level, seeing the different problem points across different projects, or at least the different mental models that we're trying to do between chains or on one side or another, or you know, demystifying some of those questions, that would be a great place for people to come together in. And um, 
yeah, just would, would love for anybody to, to jump in and, and keep going. I think we're all just trying to build together. Can I ask another question? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Um, so uh, the question is around transferability. So right now uh, I'm working with Set Zeus, and the way he wrote the smart contract was that um, if someone were to trans, like they, they create a Trajan account, log in with their wallet, and if they were, if that person were to transfer their BNS to a different address, that we would detect that and basically like hide their profile on Trajan. And what we're trying to do is prevent someone from building up this reputation connected to the BNS and then like sell their reputation. It'd be more like a person, right? And so going back to Jude's comment, if we were to send, how do we prevent that? If we were to, so I guess my question is the, the connection between BNS and your actual address. So does that make sense? So if these ordinals to someone's address, we want to prevent them from, you know, transferring it right now, we're doing it to the BNS and we don't want them to transfer their BNS to a different address. I don't know if that right. Makes sense. So um, in, in this hypothetical world, would it be acceptable if the user could transfer their BNS name to different stacks addresses, but they are required to use the same Bitcoin address? It's because the Bitcoin address is the one address that holds the ordinals. I'd have to think about that. Like we, that there's no transfers whatsoever, because if, if it's possible to transfer things, then it's possible to transfer a reputation to someone else, which is kind of the thing we're trying to prevent. Right. That, that's why I'm asking, because the BNS name is just a pointer to an address. Like it's a pointer yeah. to both a stack's address and also a Bitcoin address. And we can make it so that the ordinals, once they're sent to that Bitcoin address, can never be sent again. Okay. Um, what we could do also, um, just the, the reason why I, I um, is I'm suggesting this is because people will want to rekey the name. So they might want to get a different name at some point, but preserve their the reputation yeah. that goes with it. Like say they get married or say they come up with a better name for themselves that, or the, maybe the, maybe it's a, a brand name and you rebrand. Um, you'd want to preserve the reputation for the entity that controls that. And the name is just a, a pointer to that reputation. Uh, we could certainly make it so the address could not change because um, you could link the BNS uh, name to that Bitcoin address and the, B and the Bitcoin address back to the BNS name by just having each private key mutually sign each other's records, for example. Yeah, that's more lines because that's what I thought of as well. People might want to change their BNS, but we don't want we don't want to, people to be able to sell their reputations. So that would actually yeah. solve that problem. Okay. Yeah. So as long as it's the case that the software is able to identify that you know this BNS name is owned by the same person who owns this Bitcoin address, and an ordinal sent to this Bitcoin address can't be transferred, then you can conclude that this BNS name um, also corresponds to this Bitcoin address. Yeah, of course, you can always get someone your private keys, but then that's like such an edge case that roll the dice on that one. Okay, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, it doesn't, have, it, no one's going to do that to transfer because then there's so much counterparty risk. I could just, you know, take it back. If I, yeah. I still have a copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, thank you. That That's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, guys. Uh, we're one minute over. So just a quick last word. Next, the next Friday is going to be a stereo committee update, monthly update. Uh, we'll try to get a little bit of a code of conduct in there as well. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you everybody for coming today. Uh, really great discussions. Uh, yeah. See you next week. Thank right. you. Thanks everyone.